Yeah, but, but, but your Excellency, let me just follow up on something your, in your opening uh, remarks when you said you had spoken with the president and on a separate occasion, his handlers on a separate occasion. So what was his response when you spoke to him his about this? His response, Mr. President has a set mind. Let me tell you, I have spoken to him personally. And his outing publicly also confirms what he told me. Mr. President believes that for peace to reign in Nigeria, there must be open grazing. There must be provision for uh, cattle routes. There must be provision for uh, grazing areas. And according to him, Mr. President feels that those grazing areas that were enacted, especially in the Northern States, and cattle routes, those who have encroached on it, because I raised it with him, and he insisted that those who have encroached on it should be relocated. And that was why I told him that, look, we are no longer in the 50s. We are no longer in the 60s because the population have overgrown the land what we have. Land is not increasing. But today, we have over 200 million people compared to the less than 40 million we had in the 1950s. So there is no way we can talk about open grazing. In my state, for instance, there is no land for open grazing, but there is land for ranching. And this is the global best practice. If we accept this, this problem will be over. And that is why most of my colleagues, in fact, the entire of my colleagues, irrespective of their party affiliation from the South, accepted that, look, the way to go, it is ranching. Most of the states in the North have also accepted that, look, the way to go, it is ranching. And I have recommended to Mr. President and his handlers that, look, just like we subsidize agriculture and uh, provide subsidy for uh, fertilizer and all that, we can do the same thing for Hesman because ranching, it, it can be a little bit expensive compared to open grazing. So we can actually help these, our headers, by ensuring that we have uh, subsidy for in terms of uh, water we provide, because their capital takes a lot of water, in terms of uh, uh, fees that we provide. And we can devise several other ways. And I can assure you, I'm a farmer, and I know the challenges that we're talking about. I have a ranch, and I know the problems accompanying this. But at the same time, I know the potentials that we have. This is another way that we can provide millions of opportunities, millions of jobs, and also empower our people uh, who, for now, when they cultivate rice and harvest the straw or soya beans, when they harvest the straw and all that, is wasted and it is burnt. This can be turned into feeds. That is what I use in my ranch. And I've been saying that we can do all this. But Mr. President doesn't believe that. So I was not too surprised, but I was disappointed that after the entire country, is talking about uh, uh, ranching. You have heard what uh, Raji said, and many other responsible Nigerians who want this to be solved. But because I think Mr. President is pushing me to think that what they say about him, that he has a hidden agenda in this country, it is true, because it is very clear that he wants to foreignize. But he is not the first person who was Fulani president. Shagari was Fulani president. Uh, Yaradua was Fulani president. They were the best president in the history. But President Buhari is the worst president when it comes to issues of security and keeping his promises. Go back and check in 2015. What did he say? Human rights uh, issues. He talked about press freedom. He talked about the economy. He talked about uh, corruption. He talked about security. Tell me one thing that Mr. President has achieved. He has achieved some level of development in other uh, sectors. But truly, these prominent things that is a concern to Nigerians, and we're all worried. Tell me where Mr. President have come out to address this matter. Is this corruption? We are worse in the history of this country.